your what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's your boy no name back at it with another giants video we got some breaking news and i know i'm a bit late on it you guys probably already watched the entertainers video ron effects uh kid blue fist vegas all of them great youtube creators but you know your boy got busy life happens and whatnot but I still had to get this video out there to you guys. Pat Shermer, head coach of the New York Giants, or should I say former head coach, has been fired around 9 a.m. Eastern time. Like that's like even before I wake up, you know, on vacation, you know. But 9 a.m. Eastern time, he was let go and the Giants keep general manager Dave Gettleman. Now, for those of you that have been with my channel for about, let's say 16 weeks, length of the regular season, you already know that I soured on Shermer about two to three weeks into the season and when I started backtracking and I started analyzing my absolute hate for this dude I realized I soured on him since last year a lot of you know that I was one of his biggest uh, I don't want to say haters because I had valid reasons for not wanting this guy to come back and obviously they came to fruition as the team didn't want him back but I was one of the guys one of the biggest supporters of firing Pat Shermer he's a great quarterback developer and we saw that with Daniel Jones this season he had DJ, he had a great rookie season, you know, 24 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Really the only bad thing about it was that uh, he got injured around the high ankle area and also he needs to improve on his fumbling problems. But other than that, Shermer did what he came to do. He trained Daniel Jones very well, taught him very well, and you can see that if there's one player out of the entire 52-man roster that really improved throughout this year, it was Daniel Jones. And also Darius Slayton, but maybe that has something to do more with the wide receivers coach than Shermer. But, once again, bring, bring back to that point, the only player that improved on this team was Daniel Jones. Everybody else was either stagnant or basically went backwards. Uh, BJ Hill is probably the greatest example I could give to you guys, but I don't even need to list the examples because you know. We went... Yo, so we went 4-12 and this season. It is a step back from 5-11, and 11, and you might say it's not that big of a step back, but it's a rebuilding team, and generally a rebuilding team, or any team that wants to do good, should be improving each year. And now you might argue it's one game back, but as Giants fans that watch the team throughout the year, we all know um, the team and the way they performed this year is way more horrible and way more bad than the team and how they performed last year. You see a lot of things just break wrong, you know, they broke left instead of breaking right. The defense took a huge step back, and that is because we're a lot younger. But even within those younger players, you're not seeing that much progression. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about from a week-to-week -week basis. You didn't see improvement in this losing team. There's like two types of losing teams in the NFLs. Losing teams that are just straight up bad and losing teams that are competitive. The Giants are a losing team that are straight up bad. They're, they're losing because of how trash they are. The Detroit Lions, probably the best example I could use this year, they were a losing team. They went 3-13, I believe, or 4-12, I'm going to have to double check. But they were very competitive, and they were in each game that they played. Another example for those of you that remember, the Cleveland Browns team that went 0-16. Uh, it's very hard to go 0-16, but there was a good amount of games that year that I caught, and you could see that that was a very competitive losing team. They were in each game. There's a possibility that they could have been better. The Giants at 4 and 12, honestly, we should not be 4 and 12. We should probably be 2 and 14, 3 and 13, because that's how bad the team is. And I'm glad Shermer is gone. Um, he's not a bad dude or anything. I hope he does find a job somewhere else, but preferably as an offensive coordinator, because that's where his strengths lies. Uh, he was great for Minnesota. I believe at one point he was the offensive coordinator for the Eagles, maybe during that first Nick Foles one in like 2012, 2013. But in general, he's a good offensive coordinator. He's not a great head coach. And being a head coach isn't just managing the offense and defense, as I've said in my last video. It's also managing the players, making sure that everybody's progressing, making sure that your coaches are prepared, you know, making sure that all the staff is prepared, the players themselves are prepared. And I've said it multiple times on this channel when I've done reaction videos to the games that the team looked utterly unprepared and they looked like a bunch of schoolboys out there playing against grown men. And that's not something that you want your head coach to allow to happen. Now, in the dreamland, all right, I'm done talking about Shermer and my hate for him and whatnot. I've already beating a dead, like beating the dead horse at this point because I've been on him since week two of the regular season. But I'm, I want to talk about possibilities of what could happen. Like I said, I'm very happy that he's gone, but there's always the off chance that we hire somebody that could be worse than him. And you want to believe that's not going to happen. 
But we're talking about the New York Giants here, and we went through two coaches in the past three years, basically. There's a good chance it could happen, and I, I pray to God it doesn't. I pray that we do not hire Jason Garrett from the Cowboys. Like, that's been a name that's been thrown around. I, I, I pray that we don't hire somebody that comes in and does what Shermer did, or even worse, somebody like McAdoo from a couple years ago, who was worse than Shermer because he lost the support of the locker room. If there's one thing you could argue for Pat is that is that he had the support of the locker room up until the very end. Saquon and Daniel Jones just yesterday were in support of their head coach. So I hope that doesn't happen. And a dream scenario would honestly be he comes back as our offensive coordinator. Like, I, I don't like the guy as a head coach, but I have to give him credit where credit is due. He's good at calling plays when he's only the only responsibility he has is calling plays when he's not responsible for everything else on the team but that's not gonna happen that's never gonna happen why <laughs> you know think about it logically you just got fired from this place you're gonna go back and work at a small position no it's not gonna happen another dream thing would probably be josh mcdaniels from the patriots great great offensive mind coming as our head coach hopefully he has success there maybe ron rivera comes in as our head coach or maybe even just as a defensive coordinator we could go a defensive route something that we haven't done in a while the thing I love about defensive coaches is that, is that they're a lot more disciplinarian than offensive coaches. And that's not to say there aren't offensive coaches out there that, you know, don't instill that level of dif discipline into their players as the defensive coaches do. No, that does exist. But, you know, if we're talking generally here, you want to go defense if you're looking to, you know, get your players into shape mentally and all that. I would love somebody like um, Robert Saleh from the San Francisco 49ers. I have no clue how he's going to perform as a head coach because he has never performed been in that job before he's only ever been a defensive coordinator but maybe he can succeed maybe rat rule rat rule matt rule out of baylor but uh we don't even know if matt rule is going to come because another problem is dave gettleman needs to give up some of his power and i'm glad that we kept gettleman guys like saquon daniel jones darius slayton will hernandez i could go on and on ryan Connolly. dave gettleman is a great evaluator of talent in the draft not so much in free agency I think what's going to happen is we're going to have to get a coach that takes over that free agency period because Gettleman has had really just a bunch of duck eggs when it comes to signing players. Now he's never had the amount of cap space that the Giants have going into this offseason. We have almost a hundred million dollars to spend on players, but his track record at the same time isn't the very best. And he will need to give up some power in terms of uh, player management and who he signs, who he gets for the team if we expect to get a good head coach because any good head coach would want to have some type of power in deciding who's on the team and getting that good head coach would fix you know our problems in free agency maybe even let Gettleman focus even more on the draft and he could give us some more studs but that's all in the realm of possibility that there's nothing sure there and I never want to become as the entertainer said I got a chance to watch his video on the way home he brought up a really good point you never want to be that team that runs through head coaches like you know, like guys drink water. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be a team that drops a head coach every year because they have a problem with them. I do want our next hire to be somebody that we have for the next 5, 10, maybe even 15 years. Much like a Tom Coughlin, much like coaches before him. The coaches we've had success with stayed here for a long time and they stayed here for a long time for a reason. So I want whoever it is, for the sake of stability, for the sake of the development of the players, for the sake of the fans, and definitely for the sake of improving and winning, I want it to be the right guy, and I want it to be somebody that could stay here for a long, long time, whether it's a defensive-minded head coach, offensive-minded, whether it's somebody coming up from the college games, whether it's somebody who's been released from another team and they, ha they still have something to show the NFL, whether somebody is completely new like Robert Saleh, who's never had a head coaching gig, but this could be his breakout. Who knows? Whatever it is, just let it be right. I Post your comments down below. You guys know I love chatting with y'all. Like, share, subscribe to the video. The off-season is here. And much like how I began my channel with off-season videos, I'm going to have a bunch of those out. I still got the season recap coming. I'm probably going to do a couple videos on possible head coaching candidates, all that. Definitely draft stuff coming along down the pipeline. Let me know if there's anything specific that you guys want. Put it down below. I'm out. Yer. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.